Good morning everyone. This is Saturday morning and it's time to walk on a bike. So yeah. and basically today what I wanna do basically today what I wanna do you can see the holes, the, the venting holes on the hub motor. I have one, uh, one, uh, I have the holes on this side, on the right side, and the hole on this side as well. And the holes didn't do much, but they should do much. So I'm gonna take the wheel off and make those holes bigger, make some more holes, and share it all with you. So stay tuned. First of all, we gotta flip the bike. Okay, thank you. Now you gotta flip the bike. This is great. The weight is a bit close. Uh, now I forgot. One tire to protect the handle handlebar. I'm going to protect my grips and everything. Okay, let's take a little bit over here. Oh. We got it. So, now, after the bike is flipped. We need to take some tools. So what do we need to take the, this wheel off? We need a 21 mil wrench, cutter for, for the zip ties, 5 mil iron key, and we're gonna need to open this uh, rotor as well with uh, whatever you call it in English. Uh, star, we call it in Hebrew, uh, like star key. And we need another 4 mil Allen key. So. Finally, the fence starts working. Uh, <laughs> I use uh, this 4mm bullet and this. I use only uh, six of these wires for the full, full sensors and the temp sensor. So, let's just open this one. Not all the way. Have a jump in the front tire. That's what. Anyway, take the wheel off. We gotta take this screw off because the wheel comes out backwards. And this brake rotor, uh, brake caliper, just won't let it go out unless it goes this way. So we're gonna keep it this way. We're gonna put our screw and washers over here so you won't forget the audio and one thing left is to loosen the chain and we're out loose. by the way for all of those all of those saying I walk really fast I'm sure that's because of the wall place I walk in it's a workshop <laughs> e-bike workshop okay now, we got the wheel. Basically, you see these holes, these are not big enough. I wanted to make them small, but it wasn't a smart idea. 
So we're gonna make those one bigger and add some more hold around the edge of the cups. On the other side, on the other side, I'm gonna make those bigger and add small holes on the inside. So we have a few things left to do, which is take off the rotor, take off the free wheel uh, and the nuts from the wheel, and then take it open. And that's actually something really cool to show on YouTube how to open a hub without uh, the right tools. <laughs> So, what did we say? About a 10 mm wrench. So, I will smart this XL and nuts are stronger than me. An important thing, you just need to remember the order of the. Actually, I'm doing it to wrong. I'm not sure what you think. I haven't opened this hub in a while, so I need to remember what's going on here. Yeah, that's the wrong side. That's not the side I want to open. Basically, yeah, I want to open this side first, and then push on this side, and the motor comes out, and then open this cup. So, I'm gonna have to start by taking off the, the nuts and washers, like I said earlier. Uh, it's always important to keep the washers and the nut in the right order because this is what makes the wheel centered one side, this is the other I'm gonna keep it this way so it won't forget the order in a place where I wouldn't touch it so we will, do we need to take it off? I think it's better We'll see, let's think about it later. Uh, first of all, we said we want to get rid of the auto. sells everything for cheap just you know is the this guy in the neighborhood fix bikes so we just fi find stuff at other shops and sell it for cheap so we found this tire and another uh, 24.3 45 inch uh, hoggy G sleek tire which I, is really rare so I took it too both for 100 shekels about 25 bucks so that's a fine. So now I'm gonna show you how to open a hub motor without the right tools. First of all, you got, gotta open one cup. Gotta take one cup loose. Take all the screws off. All right, everything's uh, like every every mechanical parts part to get it round. You have to open it. Uh, one, one, uh, one screw at a time and loosen it and then open it. So you won't have too much pressure on one screw. Then it's better. So now that all the screws are loosened, now we can open them. You, you can see I've done it with the rotor as well earlier. So now it's important. I gotta find somewhere to save all the screws because I don't want to lose them. Okay, we got a bow for the screws. That's one. And we have 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, 16 bolts. First thing, always important, <coughs> when you open a hub motor, you just need to open one cup entirely before you even try to do anything else. So don't ever open the both caps. 
before getting out the stadium. You need to get one cup off, take the stadium off, and then you can take the other cup off. And when you want to get the stadium back, you gotta do it the same way. Uh, you gotta put the cup on with the bearing. You gotta put after that. Uh, basically, the bearing inside the cup works like a guide. Make sure the wheel goes in straight. Uh, the stable goes in the wheel straight. Because uh, if it doesn't go in straight, it could bash into the magnets and break them. And <clears throat> and also you could damage your uh, state or your eliminations and you don't want that so we almost got this side here just one screw left okay and now it obviously won't come off like this. Maybe I just could just spin it. Best way to start. Uh, another thing, always I like to open the hub uh, in the side of the uh, wire harness. So you will see basically after that I will hit this side and I don't want to hit the side with the wires. So first of all I'm gonna get the cap. Uh, with the side of the wires first now you just tap it on the floor and you can see just two little taps and it's open loose and now basically if it's the side of the wires you want it to come off without the bearing even though it doesn't matter that much so it came out with the bearing you don't care Without the bearing, uh, it's easier to get back on without holding the the wires. So now we just want to get. So that's one cut we're gonna drill. We wanna add some holes here in the center and make those ones bigger. And now it's the interesting part. I'm gonna show you how to get this tado out of here. So of course you need all these nuts open everything so you can uh, show it through and basically what you want to do is you want to hit it hard and centered it has to be centered uh, hit it hard but centered uh, and in the right place so you won't break anything one time a friend of mine came and just bashed my motor too hard on the floor and he, had, he bent the cup on this side because he, he hit too much and I had to pay for it so be careful with this if you don't want to take risks don't do it in January at the moment I always open open hubs like this but you gotta know how to do it so basically you wanna hit it after you hit it just press slowly and after you press and the stator is out you want to stand on the tire and push it now you're gonna see it light first of all bash it to the floor not too strong and it gotta be centered so now you can see it starts getting out now I'm gonna stand on the wheel and take it down now it goes out and I can pull it like this. Wow. So, oh, that was hard. so I'm gonna also clean this stato off because I see it has lots of dirt. So yeah, people were saying about the ferrofluid that it's not smart to put ferrofluid and and uh, drill the caps but actually I can't see the fill fluid anymore it looks like it faded or I don't know got out or melt <laughs> have no idea but last time I opened this hub it was all black from fill fluid now there's nothing uh, but you can see dirt here I, I'm just wondering 
if this dirt came from the ferro fluid from, or from dirt from the outside of the motor. Anyway, it doesn't hurt us too much, doesn't do much, just a little bit of dirt. We're gonna clean it off and keep on what we were doing. Now I'm gonna open open this side. And I'm wondering if I need to open. No, I don't. Because I wanna drill outside and this one, I don't need to get the free wheel off. So let's take this cap off to another eight screws. One thing people have asked me is why I don't use torque arms. Basically, I don't need to. Look at this. Uh, you know, this frame is not original. Originally, it came like I use it. But you can see this, this, on the left uh, of the weld. It's the old dropout. And on the right, there's like twice, twice the thickness, if not more. And it's steel. Uh, so this thing is thick as fuck. The the axle gets in super tight. You can see I barely can barely fit it. It's really tight. Basically, it sits so well, and I don't need to around. Maybe when I go over 100 amps, but it's not, probably not gonna happen with this leaf motor. That's why I don't need to go down. Drop out strong enough, don't need to go down. One thing I want, always want to add to this thing is just drill a hole from here to here, uh, thread, thread it all the way, and put uh, locking nuts. Because this will make it just perfect instead of good. <laughs> it's actually not easy at all to drill. So now this cap came off like this because it wasn't on the axle. So I need to remember what which side is which. I don't think it's, it really matters. But oh yeah, it's easy. Easy to remember. We have this magnet on the side of the disc. So this is the side of the rotor. We're gonna put it aside. And we're gonna get to the interesting part. We're gonna drill the cap! <laughs> 